this is i'm sure a very very long video i can already tell just looking at the time stamps hey everyone my name's kristen and this is my cathedral garden if you are new here i'm so glad that you're here little bit about me. I'm a former elementary education teacher who is now a homeschooling mom to four kiddos. I have a fourth grader, a second grader, a kindergartner, and then a little three-year-old just running around in here. And today I am going to be talking about one of my most favorite things ever in the whole world, and that's reading. This is actually going to be a collaboration video, um, and it is hosted by a YouTube friend of mine. I have actually got to know her so well, and it is Nina from Danina Farms. If you have not checked out her channel, I encourage you to make sure that you go by and say hello. She is one of the sweetest mamas. She also has four kiddos, and they live on a small little hobby farm and they talk about all things homeschooling, homemaking, homesteading, and her heart is just so, so sweet. So make sure that you head over to Danina Farms. I'm gonna link her channel down below, as well as the playlist, because she's hosting this collab, and I am thrilled, I cannot wait. So, let's get right into it, Something shall we? Something you should know about me is that I love to read. I love it so much. Um, it is my choice of a me time activity. I will choose it just above almost anything else. I enjoy it much more than watching TV or something like that. So I really, really enjoy reading. However, I um, don't read as broadly, I feel like, as those people on Instagram that um, also say the same. So just know that going into it, I am wanting to read more. There was a season in my life where I didn't read as much. Um, and I'm going to talk about that just a little bit as well. But um, I still thought it would be fun to participate in. And I love that this collab was just um, a, a one for moms. So I broke mine down into a few different categories. And these are just things that I've enjoyed either through my life or um, as I learned how to become a stay-at-home mom and then later on a homeschooling mom or um, just different classics that I may have read once before and then picked back up as an adult, things like that. So let's get into it, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna start out by not talking about book recommendations at the beginning. I am going to start out by telling you how I read, how I find time to read. I have four kids and they range in ages from 10 to three. Um, and so a lot of people hear that and they are like, how do you even read? I do not understand. And I totally get it. Um, especially when I was in the little years, um, that was easier at the beginning of the little years, harder in the middle of them. And I feel like I'm just now getting to the point to where it's easier again. Um, and so what I mean by that is whenever I had one kid or two kids that were two and under, um, there were guaranteed nap times at my house um, and guaranteed times of just stillness and that is when I did a lot of my reading. Um, that changed the older my kids got and the more kids we continued to add on and so during the little years when I had three that were five and under and then four that were six and under, um, I didn't read very much during those years at all uh, and it was it was hard and I, it was something, it was kind of like a slow fade. I didn't even notice it happening until um, I guess my youngest, who's now three, was um, a few months old, maybe six or seven months old. And um, I saw an article online about how um, Facebook posts and Instagram posts and the world of stories and changing things, um, changing texts, were making us basically ADD readers and um, people were finding that they were not able to sit down with a book and read the same page for a very long period of time without feeling like they had to pick up their phone or switch to something different and i was like oh my goodness i, I felt that i felt that and because because i was a reader at one point so i felt um the fact that i did not have the attention span that i once did so i read that article coupled with um a facebook post by someone talking about um, 
President Bush. And he was saying that, brought up the fact that President Bush read a certain amount of books. I wanna say over a hundred books every year. He made that his goal. And um, now I might have that completely wrong, but I believe that's what that was. And the comment that this Facebook post made was if the leader of the free world, at the time when he was president, he would read 100 books. So if the leader of the free world made time to read and he read 100 books in one year, then surely I have time. Surely I can, I can figure it out. And that really convicted me in a way. I say convicted, I use that kind of Christian word, but I was, but it really was like, okay, it struck a chord. Um, I don't really, I'm not the president of the United States. I'm a mom of four kids, but I can do this. I can make time, but it's going to take a little bit of work. Um, so I started setting aside time then. And honestly, this was probably one of the, one of the biggest game changers for me in my reading life. And it was the flip to, um, getting up early to do something for me. So before I would say, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to work out. And that is great. And the few times I did it, I was thankful that I did it, but I am not one of those people that just gets life from working out. I do like it. It's fun to have friends to do it with. And I'm so glad after I'm done with it, but it's not the thing that's going to make me jump out of bed ready to go. In fact, if I know that I have to work out first thing in the morning, I'm going to hit snooze way more. Um, and so at that point when I read that Facebook post and I was like, okay, I need to, I need to fix something. I decided that instead of getting up to go work out and fighting myself on that, I was going to get up and spend some time for me. And so I started setting my alarm just slightly earlier. Um, and I would get up and I would read whatever I wanted. I would do my Bible study and then I would just read read and that is how I started reading more again um, that was one of the ways that helped me another thing that helped was getting a Goodreads account now I thought that this was something like audible at the beginning it's not I thought I was going to be able to read books on it I'm not you don't but instead it is a way it's just an app on your phone and it is a way to keep up with what you have read what you want to read what other people are reading, um, and to make a reading goal. So if you go and download Goodreads, you can do all of those things. The last thing I want to talk about is redeeming some of the time that you have where maybe you're not necessarily sitting down, but you might be doing something that you could have, um, some reading time. So for instance, whenever I clean up the kitchen at night while my kids are in the bath, uh, I will put in, I have some little Bluetooth earphones and I will stick just one of them in so I can still hear if somebody needs me or something like that. And I will go to my Scribd account. That's that one. It's S-C-R-I-B-D, Scribd. And it is basically just like Audible, it's set for about half the price and instead of buying the books like you do on Audible, you rent them. So um, you can read however many books you want all at the same time and they have a ton of audiobooks. They also have books that you can read and you can just read it on your phone. That's great. Um, it's been awesome. I have listened to so many books that way. Um, those are my recommendations for if you are wanting to read more and you're just like, I don't know when I'm going to do that. Figure out a time that you can just give it to yourself. So now I'm going to start with um, books that I enjoy and I kind of pulled some and from different categories. And these are obviously not everything, but just a few that I have read throughout the years that have stuck with me or that I've really enjoyed and maybe some that you haven't heard of, probably a lot of them though that you have. Um, so let's start with parenting slash homeschool slash mom books, like things to just feed your soul as a mama, especially a stay at home mama and especially a homeschooling mom. Okay. I'm not gonna talk about a ton of them. In fact, I'm gonna basically have just two authors, but one of the 
books that really, really helped, especially whenever we had a bunch of littles running around. It's, it's so funny because it's this one, The Duggars, 20 and counting, and it's basically the story of how they got um, on their show. And if you can see the picture, like this is when, before any of the kids got married or anything like that, um, I was gonna try to find the copyright to tell you when it was written, 2008. Um, so this book actually was such an encouragement to me. As I became a stay-at-home mom, as my kids started getting older, and um, we had to start, you know, discipling and disciplining them and things like that. There were so many good ideas in this book that I found whenever I was struggling um, or just uh, was like, how should I handle this? That I would go to this book and it would actually just make, give me like a shot of encouragement. And I got to where I knew. Um, where things were, so like chapter six is matters of the heart, how to reach the hearts of your kids and how they did it. Um, another one was training and correcting little ones. I had read that chapter a lot, but it was so good. Okay, so the next author I'm going to tell you about, I'm sure is not um, a surprise to anybody if you are a home making mama, and that is Miss Sally Clarkson. These are just a few of the ones that I have of hers that I gathered up and actually in gathering them, I found that I have two of these and, and it's one of my most favorite books in the whole world, The Ministry of Motherhood. And so I would like to do a giveaway to um, someone, if you have not read this book by Sally Clarkson, um, just leave me a comment down below and I would like to send someone The Ministry of Motherhood because it was just so good and I somehow have two copies. So I would love to bless someone else. So let me know if you've never read it before and I will figure out a way to pick a winner um, in the comments below. I just wanted y'all to have this and I have just about everything of hers. Um, right now I'm going through the Life Giving Home and I want to read through the Life Giving Table. I also have the Life Giving Parent. That was just like a trilogy of books they did. I've read um, the book that she wrote with her son Nathan it's called Different. I've read so many. Um, another one that I love and I have recommended before, but this one is so good, Our 24 Family Ways. It's actually about her husband, her and her husband, but it says Clay Clarkson. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal. We use this to go through um, for our morning menu time last year. So great. Um, we'll hit every age range for every kid for years and years and years. Um, and so we're gonna probably loop back through this one next year. And it's just talking about character traits and um, why, what they are, scripture that backs them up, why we should do them, the benefit, stuff like that. I mean, it is, cannot say enough good things. Okay, so, so I'm trying to make this very concise. I'm not going to pull that off, I know. But we're gonna go on to um, some of the books that I read as a kid and then um, maybe didn't didn't really see their goodness and beauty for what they were. Then I liked them just fine, but I picked them back up as an adult and oh, it was even sweeter. So let's go on to those. These are the books, it's just two of them that I'm gonna talk about right now and it is um, books that I read as a kid and then picked back up as an adult and they are the Little House series um, If you have not reread these as an adult, uh, you're missing out. They were great um, It talks a whole lot about just like what day-to-day -day life was and I'm not gonna rehash this um, More than likely you've at least heard of it But if you have not reread them as an adult, I encourage you to do it um if a lot of people use these as read alouds for their kids, I personally did not like reading these aloud to my kids because it's a lot of description, but there is a um, audiobook version with an amazing narrator. She is amazing and it's on script, so do yourself a favor and give your voice a break, but if you want to go a little faster, this is the way to go. And then the last one I wanted to talk about was one that took me so much by surprise. It was Pollyanna. This book, you guys, will just make you think differently. Um, I loved the movie growing up, 
and um, I read the book, but I didn't really remember it. And I read it last year, and it I read it during the winter, um, which was so good because sometimes in the winter I can just start to get kind of down. Um, I think everybody kind of goes through that. And this one, she plays the glad game, the glad game, and she changes the town by doing that. And I'm not going to like give everything away, but it really helped me in the way I started just viewing things and uh, change my perspective. So, super precious, sweet, sweet book. Um, so those two were ones that I read before and I'm glad I picked back up again as an adult. Okay, we're gonna head into now some of the fiction that I have enjoyed as an adult. Um, and I'm kinda gonna piggyback it and make this be a cross because I told y'all I did read the Harry Potter series whenever I was um, a high schooler. And then I picked it back up and read it again whenever my oldest was a baby. Um, and then I grabbed these last Christmas, the illustrated version. And um, I have listened through the, the whole series countless times. Jim Dale is amazing. He's an awesome narrator. Those are not on script. They are on Audible though. Um, and it is just, the, the audiobook version is amazing. Uh, there's nothing like it. And then a couple of other ones that I've enjoyed as an adult over the years. Um, these are older books, I think. I need to check when they were written. But um, Frank Peretti's This Present Darkness and um, Piercing the Darkness. One's the first book and one's the second. Um, but I cannot remember which one. But this, these books, especially the first one, um, really changed the way I thought about spiritual warfare and prayer and they're they're completely fiction um, but yeah, the way he talked about um, prayer and um, the spiritual forces that we can't see so um, it's got angels in it and it's got um, demons but the demons are fear and anger and depression and stuff like that and then the angels have you know angel names Michael Gabriel all those things and not really Michael and Gabriel um but I'm trying to find maybe one that I can that will make sense um yeah Bernice you know they have just regular people people names but um complacency was one of the things and how they're just digging their claws into these people you know anyway and it was so good because it just made me think and reminded me there's power in prayer and this is not a um this is how prayer works you know and uh, a breakdown of biblical prayer where it's um you know a non-fiction book totally fiction very well written so good it might be a little slow to get into just at first um, but I couldn't put them down. I read through them so fast. Um, then I read these. I had young kids. Um, and they are by Francine Rivers, of course. Um, if you know her, you probably have read Redeeming Love. I love that book as well. This one is um, her daughter's, or her mother's hope and her daughter's dream. Um, this is the first one. This is the second one. Great fiction stories. I love them. Um, just on legacy and family and uh, redemption so if you like fiction that's well written and christian fiction that one's those are really really good um of course anything by her i adore um so then let me see here i've got a few other ones i really like historical fiction and so um the rest of these though i do not have on my um bed i have them on my kindle now i love 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 reading a physical book very much so however the kindle has been great for being able to have my entire library quote unquote with me in my purse so i don't go anywhere without this thing it is always in there it holds a charge for forever um and I have read countless books on here. Now, it's not my preference. I like knowing where I am in a book, like how much more I have to go. 
but um, it does tell you percentages on your Kindle, so that's great. Um, so if you are a historical fiction fan, then I have a book recommendation for you, especially if you are an American history nerd like I am. Um, it is a work of fiction, but it is one of the best books I have ever read, and it's called My Dear Hamilton. And it is about Alexander Hamilton's wife, Eliza Hamilton. Um, I'm sure a lot of you probably know the story because of um, the hype and stuff that the Broadway play Hamilton um, created. Um, but this book is so, so well written. Um, I couldn't put it down. I could not put it down. I wish I had the physical book to show you just how thick it is. It's very long. I read it in two days um, because I couldn't stop. And um, the majority of that was at night when I should have totally been sleeping, but I didn't and I wasn't um, and I have no regrets. It was totally worth it. Um, that book was so good. The way they used um, primary sources such as letters and things um, and wove that throughout the dialogue to make it historically accurate when they, uh, a lot of the times when they could, they did do that, but they did it so seamlessly you didn't realize you were really reading um, founding article like language. Um, it was It was just done very, very, very well. Um, the authors of that are Laura Kamoy and Stephanie Dre, and I, they have put out um, another book. It was actually the one before My Dear Hamilton called America's First Daughter about Patsy Jefferson. Also very, very well done, historical fiction wise. Um, fast moving, but not fluffy, just so good. They also wrote one about the French Revolution called Ribbons of Scarlet. I've read that one and probably any other books that they um, come out with, I will be reading because they just do such an amazing job. So, my dear Hamilton, go and read it. You will not regret it. Then come and tell me that you read it and we can talk about it because that would just make my day. Um, I recommended it to quite a few other people and they always come back and say, oh my goodness, that was such a good book. So that one is good. Um, I'm looking through my Kindle to see other ones that I've loved. Um, oh yes, um, so there are a few that are just um, biographies. I really enjoy biographies a whole lot. Um, one of the ones that I love are by Eric Metaxas. Um, anything by him is fantastic and it was called seven men and then he wrote another one called seven women and it was about seven men who um changed the world and they were with, through christianity and so um dietrich bonhoeffer was one of them um I'm trying to think so the john john and charles wesley it's been a long time since i've read those books i say a long time it's been a few years since i've read that those books um uh, but Anyway, seven men, and some of them are very old, old dead guys, and some of them were were newer, um, newer gentlemen that have really just made an impact. So those were great, and it was pretty. It was a decently short book. Each man was a chapter, and so it's not a obviously a full uh, biography, but it would whet your appetite enough that you were that you would go and find out more. Um, Seven Women was also fantastic. Um, I really, really enjoyed that one. Uh, Hannah Walker, Susan Wil Susanna Wes Wesley, uh, or Spur and then Susanna Spurgeon. They're, it's, they're just really good. Really, really good. I encourage you to go read that one. There's also another one by Eric Metaxas called If You Can Keep It, and that one is awesome, and it was basically about the founding of our country and the um, how it was founded on Christian values and beliefs and he's got the sources to back that up and why the founding fathers set up our country the way that they that they did um, that kind of stuff just really really interests me um, 
for whatever reason. I just really enjoy reading about that. And like I said, this is totally not a um, exhaustive list. This is just like off the top of my head and off the front of my bookshelves. What did I grab that I was like, oh yes, this one. Oh yes, this one. Um, there's so many in here. I'm like looking through my Kindle and like racking my brain going, oh, I should have said this. I should have said this. Um, I'm currently working my way through um, C.S. Lewis books and because um, I honestly have never really read one of those. Very, um, yeah, I just haven't. So that is what, what I mean by I read a lot, but I feel like I'm not oh, very widely, I'm not a broad reader. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit more. This is, I'm sure, a very, very long video. I can already tell just looking at the time stamps on my camera, but I couldn't help it. I'm trying and I could not help it. Um, I'm really sorry if you have stuck around for this whole time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. You are my people. Um, and so thank you, Nina, for putting this on and for letting me ramble about like one of my very most favorite things ever in the whole world. Um, this was so much fun. If you enjoyed this uh, video, would you just give me a thumbs up? Let me know that you liked it. And um, if you would like to, you can subscribe and turn on the no notification bell so you can be notified anytime that I have a new video coming up. Um, thank y'all so much. Bye guys.